everyone welcome back to rose modeling with art of lisa i'm lisa and this is a channel dedicated to the beautiful art form called rose modeling it's a norwegian folk art that goes back to the 1600s i like to say that i don't go back to the 1600s but yes so this is part four of a series of a return to rose modeling and where we worked on c strokes then we went into s strokes making flower formations and then we went into combining strokes together, as you can see here, and finally making some flower forms. So the last part of rose modeling, and this style that I did there was telemark and a transparent telemark. There are many different styles of rose modeling. Um, so in fact, there's probably about... 15 main ones and also a few offshoots of that. So what I'm going to do today is actually, I'm going to put some carbon black here. And as always, I have my nice messy uh, palette paper here or palette, wet palette. So this has a sponge underneath. There you go. To help keep my paints wet. All right, and it has a cover that we put on top. As you can see, I've been working, so I didn't change my my uh, paper here or anything, but you know what? That's okay. All right, so what I have is carbon black, and I am going to add my medium to that. Those of you who have been with me before know I like to do a combination of three mediums together. I like to do glaze medium, flow medium, and retarder, and I'll put that in the... Uh, notes down below. All right, so I have my paint and I have my medium and I'm going to mix that together because when you do detail paint, you want it to be very loose. I like to say that it's uh, much like when you have ice cream and you are a kid and you would stir it together and melt it to make ice cream soup. This way, if you're working with oils, it will float on top of your oils that you've already laid down in a wet on wet technique. But also if you're working in acrylics, which I'm working with here, then it will lay down nicely and flow easily across the paint that you have done beforehand, much like what I have here. Now I'm working on a sketch pad here. Um, you can work on painted wood, you can work on painted cardboard, uh, bristol board, and such. But what I'm going to do today is really go over the detail work. That is the last thing that you do. And um, it kind of adds the zhuzh to it. It picks it up and makes it beautiful. So detail work or line work or outlining, as some people like to say, is done with a liner. And I have a low Cornell 10-0 liner. <coughs> this is a short liner, and I happen to like short liners. Um, so I'm going to just play. So just like what we did with the other brush, we are working with thin and thick. So thin, thick, thin. And I'm working with the pressure on the brush. So I'm going to start on my tip and I'm going to pull it towards me. I'm going to push those bristles down all the way down to the ferrule and then pull it back up again to a nice point. Now when I load my brush, I go into my paint and I twirl the brush between my fingers and I pull it out. This will naturally put my brush into a point, much like this. I'm holding my brush about a third of the way up, much like how I write. And I also use my wrist as a brace, so I stay on top of it, so it gives me more flow. If I'm down like this, I can't go as far. So if I'm up on my wrist, I can go much further, for example, because I simply roll my wrist, and I can just play with it. Now, as you can see, the paint is stuttering out, but that is because we are painting on paper. So much like when you paint on the walls, it gets sucked in. Same here. So, like what we were doing with our C-strokes and S-strokes, think of an airplane. It's down on the, on the tarmac, and it's starting to move its way out. And as it moves its way down the runway, you take the pressure off and just let it take off. 
This way you can go from thin to thick. I can go in the other direction. Again, pushing those bristles down. I'm pulling them to my right. And I'm pulling them up to a tip. And taking off. One of the things I always like to tell people that are starting with this is just play with the brush. Play with it and see what kind of shapes you can get. Push the bristles to the side and pull and see what you can make it do for you. Kind of like, well, my mom, when I was a kid, used to sit by the telephone and she'd doodle. So same idea. You're just going to doodle. And the more you doodle, the more you get the feel of the brush. Now remember, when you're working with painting or anything you do, it's muscle memory. So don't compare yourself to me, who has Forty plus years of muscle memory. Yes, 40 plus years of muscle memory in doing this. So this comes much easier and smoother to me than it would to somebody who has just picked up the brush. Literally, I'm just on the tip of the brush here. Very tip of it. I can just make it wiggle, right? Or I can push the brush down and get this thick line. The more you practice something, the more you play with it, the more you learn and the more fun you have with it. You know, it wouldn't be fun if everything came easy. Part of the joy and pleasure of doing this is really the work that goes behind it, the progression. Because isn't it fun when you see something you start and love and you see the growth in it? In fact, I'll show my first one here, or one of my first ones here in just a second. Let's see, is it down on the ground by me? Maybe, maybe, possibly, could be. Of course, when I want to find it, is it right there? No, but that's okay, I'll pull it out near the end. All right, so what I'm going to do now, oh, little tidbit. So there is a time when I do put my hand on the table. That's for teardrops. Rose Molly has a lot of teardrops. So here I'm going to put my hand by the table, and if you notice, I'm holding up on the metal portion of my brush. I'm going to take my bristles, I'm going to pull it towards me, and then I'm going to push my bristles to the side. Whoops, I didn't like that one. That wasn't a nice teardrop. Let's do it again. Pull the brush towards me, push the bristles to the side, and then I pull the bristle back in and lift up so I don't get a flippy. See if I can do that again up close. Take the bristles, push it over, pull it back in. Oh, that was ugly. Ugh, ugh, ugh. <laughs> it happens. Anyway, I hope everybody is having a blessed day today. Tomorrow is Easter, and I send blessings to all who celebrate Easter. God is good. And then blessings to all for Passover and any other holiday you may celebrate. God is good every day. And, you know, kind of when I'm painting here, I feel that I am sharing the gift that God gave me. And I think that's one of the most important things to remember in life. It's all about sharing God's gifts with others. You know, because if it weren't for God, I wouldn't be in this position and doing something I really love to do. All right, so you can see I'm just having fun with this. I'm literally taking my bristles. I'm pushing it to the side and then pulling back. Push to the side and pull back. Push to the side and pull back. And these I can make really small, the less pressure. Oh, that was an ugly one, but that's okay. All right. Now, just so you can see this, we're going to flip back to this one that I did last week. And, in fact, I'm going to take it out of here because it'll be easier to work on if it's out of here. Okay. And again, I will put in the notes the formula that I use and the brush that I'm using. And everybody's going to find out when you take different classes with people and, and such, you're going to try different brushes and you'll discover along the way what you prefer. Some people like longer liners, some like shorter liners. I happen to like a shorter liner. So a longer liner, let me see if I have one handy here. I mean, I have lots of brushes here. The ones I really want 
of course, stretched out across my table. Let's try not to spill them. Um, okay, let's see. Let's see more brushes. This is a longer liner. This is a 9375 mid-length liner by King Art. I'll also write that down. Um, so anyway, you'll find you'll see what you like as you go. Okay, let's just add some paint here. Okay, nothing like family life. My dog is outside waiting for somebody to play with him. So I'll do that right after this. All right, so here I went around the sepal. And a lot of times I like to use whatever background color I have. I just make a leaf. And notice I am pulling this towards me. I, I won't say always. 99.99.9% .99 of the time I'm pulling the brush towards me because it's so much easier to pull towards you than it is to push away. You have so much more control. Now, you would see that I don't necessarily follow the exact line that I painted. I just go with my imagination, whatever flows, and I'm just going to work my way around this little flower that I did the other day. And I'm just adding little connectors and just having fun with it. I typically find that I never quite do everything the same each time. And that's actually a nice thing. Some variety in life here. Okay, push down and pull up. And if you notice, I'm doing a lot of thick, thin, thin, thick. And again, I'm going to my paint. I'm rolling my brush through and loading it up. And I do load it up, whoop, right there we go, all the way up to the ferrule there, right up to the metal portion. So, now I typically won't pull every stroke from the same point, because if I pulled every stroke from the same point, it's going to look very stripy. And I don't want it to look stripy. Let's pull this around here. And I'll just make this a nice little telemark rose mulling flower. You'll find different styles have a, ver a different usage in the um, detail. If I were doing the Holling doll style, which is a very asymmetrical, heavier style, then my detail work would be much heavier and maybe not as maybe not as um, uh, as much I tend to do more detail with with telemark than I do with Holling dolls although sometimes I get a little out of hand but you know what that's okay the Vest Agda style from Vest Agda Norway has a tremendous amount of a tremendous amount of uh, teardrops. So we do that as well. So that one's a great study in teardrops. I'll have to do that soon. So I have other videos that are in the pike to come down. Uh, this is the last of this series, and it's kind of a nice review of freehand rose mauling and really working on the brush strokes, the basics of C strokes and S strokes, which really do make the foundation for all styles of rose modeling. So let's finish this here. Add a couple little, you like those little teardrops? Sometimes I like to do a little chocolate chip here. Let's do a chocolate chip. Slide it over and pull it back and just do a little wiggle line out. And just have fun with it. I hope you've enjoyed this series. And I hope you look forward to some more series coming out. I'm going to do one on wood prep and board prep. And uh, I know I have one for cantus leaves coming out and different things like that. So I hope you enjoyed today. Sending blessings to you all. Please remember, God is good. It's just paint. Enjoy and have a blessed day. Take care.